scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, verse 25. Please, we have to really, really rush tonight. Proverbs 16, verse 25. I welcome everyone, inside and outside. May the Lord bless you. He brought you to change you. He will give you what money cannot buy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16. Can we read together? Do we have Amplified? Amplified, please. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's read together. One to read. One more time. There is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But the end of it is the way of death. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to the things of the Spirit. Empower us by light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, I began to think and meditate on the things that I'll be sharing and the Lord began to reveal to me how that if we stay on course please listen if we stay on course with spiritual things and the things we are hearing the things we are listening to the Lord again began to give me an assurance that there is a height he's taking us in the spirit and that that height will not come in one day but that line upon line precept upon precept if we will be faithful enough to allow the light of God finish its work in our lives you know one of the things that we suffer a lot in the body of Christ is impatience everyone say impatience we want everything to happen sharp sharp we want anointing sharp sharp we want insight sharp sharp we want to have all the revelations of the kingdom you want to listen to all the koinonia messages and receive all of the impartations at once you want all of the prosperity and the blessings to just come at once except for the fact that that's not how spiritual things work hallelujah god does not throw people up he lifts people and it's a process when he lifts you, he sustains you by knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not just enough to be lifted. You will come down. But when he raises you up and then he keeps you in a place of stability, no power in existence can bring you down. Hallelujah. One of the things that I really thought about um I thought about a lot of things but one of them that struck a chord in my spirit and that will be the foundation of our teaching tonight I'll be very brief and then we'll pray you know 
over the last few weeks have been challenging our convictions. Praise the Lord. Those of us who have been consistent for a while, you know that I have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them. Transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new, that is sustainable and is able to take you to the place where God wants you to go. It's not enough that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. It's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. Like the lovely lady there shared that she knew that there was a place, there was a, a prophetic destiny for her life. But knowing it, brothers and sisters, is not enough. You must know how to get there and what it takes to get there. And then you must commit yourself. And this is one of the major problems with the body of Christ. We teach a lot about where we are going and where God is taking us. And the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us. And that is not a lie. Except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are to that prophetic destiny, they will be frustrated with time. The Bible says hope that is deferred can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals but to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane. And if you subject yourself to these teachings, listen to me, listen to me. If you subject yourself to the truth you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly, wholly. The Bible says how that Joshua followed the Lord wholly. Was it Caleb? The Lord wholly not half-hearted there are many of us who um, we love the Lord but we are not really convinced about spiritual things hallelujah so our perception about spiritual things are just on the average you are not extreme you are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things so you can bend when you hear anything else but the Bible says be steadfast be immovable hallelujah you must be rooted in something listen let me tell you something if you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality then don't keep quiet about it probe what you've heard and if you think it is not consistent with the word of God throw it away do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe hallelujah there are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of God for the purpose of solidarity. Not because it is a revelation we plan to apply. Hallelujah. Probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place. Simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it. Is that true? If you were left all to yourself, you would not agree with some of those things. Why deceive yourself? kick away anything your spirit does not agree with and you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about are you getting my point there is no point standing for nothing if you don't believe in prosperity don't behave and pretend like you believe it probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it if you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, see, it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd, whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong. Because in the end of it, you will not get any results. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. So, it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of God. The question is, are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe and hold on to that in the secret place where no one is watching you 
you know that this is still my conviction. Hallelujah. I say this because there are many of us in the past, maybe three, four, five years, your spiritual life has not been stable. It's been a journey like a pendulum. Right now, you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again. I heard a lady send me a text and said, honestly, since I graduated, let me tell you sincerely, I went to a church and I'm serving under that church and I've sat under that teaching for three, two, three months or thereabout. And right now, I don't even know what I should believe again. If that becomes your testimony, you will be angry in the future because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place. There are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country, they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic, as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are, they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass. And they run people give towards those ideologies people give their lives towards those ideologies what do you believe what can you stand for about god about your life about your destiny are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of god's life we just hop around anything that looks like the truth so you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing based on what i've had now i'm not really sure it doesn't make sense let me stop and then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying and then tomorrow it's easy for you to bribe and then later on you say kite i need to repent where do you stand see the bible says i wish that thou art hot or cold you are neither hot nor cold you are lukewarm he said as a result i will spew you out of my mind you must stand for something you must stand for an ideology you must stand for a dimension of truth it's like marriage you cannot marry every woman is that true you cannot marry every man so you see a pretty lady right now and say ah, ah, where have you been if i saw you i would not ask rose out and then the next thing you see another person and say, you see, that's how many of us are. There is a lot of spiritual harlotry. And at the end of it, we are infected with all kinds of viruses. Nothing stands. So you used to pray and fast, but you had something. And right now, you don't even see a need for it again. Then you hear another message and you are now confused. So believers are swinging like pendulums. If your life must move forward, you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you something. I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives. And I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say our focus now is holiness. And then later on they say our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did. Because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it. You cannot find it. Because what you have held on to is not working. Listen. We are going to pray in one minute. And you're going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside.
pray for one minute I'm communicating towards a burden of the spirit you must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about do you believe in divine health is it a reality to you do you believe in the supernatural power of God what has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe was it supposed to change what has not changed about your life why has it not changed go ahead and pray lord i refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow i refuse to doubt my convictions i remain immovable I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today and we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it. Proximity is not the same as connectivity. That you are close to an anointing, that you are close to a revelation, does not mean it will become part of your life. hallelujah hallelujah there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives that you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married and that commitment you are so ashamed of it is that true to an extent that when you hear people talking and they say how about you so who is for this weekend you just laugh and then you feel to say no 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 i i this is not my ideology it is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come hallelujah every great man is fanatic about something and if you must ever experience greatness especially in the spirit you must have something you are convinced about and you must allow the holy spirit to probe your convictions very interesting scripture the bible says can we have that scripture again There is a way that what seems right seems right unto a man and appears straight the road is not straight <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing it is a straight road hallelujah like a drunkard when a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer he can see this door right here is that true based on his perspective the door is here and he will go convincingly now whether or not he's right will be shown shortly praise the lord he can see a gutter and according to what his eyes is seeing he's seen a staircase right and he reaches to that gutter and with every sense of conviction he will attempt to climb only to find out 
that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God. About rapture. About the coming of Christ. About Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs about our work there are those who believe that working is an insult is that true there are those who believe if you are not working you are not yet a man or a woman you are still a child we have all kinds of ideologies but the bible says there is what a way it seems right unto a man but in the end look at it the dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong you see why it is dangerous imagine brothers and sisters that you took a 10 hour journey or 12 hour journey to lagos and you followed a wrong road and after 12 hours you meet a, a military man on the road and he says where are you really going and he says sir the truth is lagos he said ah you are at the other side of this nation so it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much. Every subject that we had to study, we took it very seriously. And um, I did fine arts. And one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine art was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing is that true and they called it what perspectives so when we were given assignments they will tell us from so 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 perspective draw this building praise the lord there were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective they must be represented in your drawing is that true and i enjoyed it so much but then i got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone but that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. 
Everyone say perspective. That it matters your interpretation of life and everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside, we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it, my goodness, you would think Koinonia has been held in a stadium. Perspectives. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase. Are you getting me? And a good life and a great life and from his perspective, that is all there is to the Christian experience. Are you getting me? And then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood. It can cost you your life. This is their perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? And to them, it may not interest them so much when you are teaching. This guy here is teaching, I have come that you may have life. Is that true? And have life more abundantly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. Whereas another person, looking at the same truth from another perspective, begins to speak and say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If it will cost me my life, so be it. Yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective, he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven. There is a fight and this is his perspective. Now the trouble starts, hear me, when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective. You see where error begins to come in. When we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here. This is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others. Watch this. That this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together 
under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says, there is a way. Everybody said, there is a way. Now, the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life this is why you find out have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or or maybe christmas or new year or something everyone comes with his perspective why are you spending twenty thousand naira on clothes somebody said because jesus died for me he didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that? Jesus is coming soon. There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels. There are, there are many. They are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same. It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. It was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time my convictions and my ideologies it is going to be a catastrophic thing brothers and sisters if at the end of our journey you suddenly find out 
that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, how are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else. There are others who read it and nothing happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Please say it, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way, not any prophet, not any apostle, not any teacher, not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men, you will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders multiplied people and all of that Jesus is being glorified in that ministry if I be lifted up I will draw all men to myself there is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds, it will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said, there is a way there is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. 
and a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent and mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty, meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now? One day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why, you see, brothers and sisters, is part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage it's a privileged position not everybody is daft spiritually pastors never forget this when you stand there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking this is the situation the guy had been called a great man like we men of God are we just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great 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 one so according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. he says, Whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual. On that fateful day, there were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla. And they kept quiet. Worship team sang, and the guy wore suit. He came up and he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, Wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says, When they heard, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking. You see, the beautiful thing about them is... They did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentleman, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. 
areas of excesses areas where his eye had not seen when they took him what happened they expounded they said all right there is the baptism of john but did you know that pentecost happened the guy said no the person who taught me did not teach me that probably the person who taught him taught him as alpha maybe he was one of the scribes the scribes are the suspects in this teaching maybe they taught him and they said look moses is our father and this is all we have been taught follow me tonight there is a very serious journey now let's look at what happened verse 27 now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly when he was disposed to pass through achaia the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him who when he was come he helped them much which had believed through grace how did he help them next verse for he mightily convinced the jews and publicly showing by scriptures that jesus was the anointed that part was not taught him but when the guy had it he became a wonder could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what i have been taught are you hearing what i'm saying who is god speaking to in this place tonight nobody is saying your pastor did not try don't let your revelation make you insult the people but could it be brothers and sisters that you were taught about spiritual growth but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom and that other part you were not taught is punishing your christian experience and if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension you will find out that your christian experience will become richer and more complete what if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone are you hearing me that there are times that if need be you may have to die for your convictions if you open your heart to that dimension then you can enjoy the blessings of god buy all the flashy cars buy great houses but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant your christian experience becomes more perfect are you getting me what if you have been taught that's the only devil you have is the devil in your mind there is no real devil anywhere there are no demons anywhere Is that true what if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith and all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness rulers spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant christian it makes your christian experience richer are you hearing what i'm saying and it is for this cause ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please that he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens verse 10 verse 11 and he gave some what apostles and some and some and some and some perspectives he gave unto them he engraced his body with gifts listen to me revealed perspectives to them there are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs, but they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets 
that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life. Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference and there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness, these people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy but at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people. But I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me, it's on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12, why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman. Arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that. There's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, 
but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe do not miss TV. The people don't listen. Let me go on this. Let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel. But you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is. They just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh and his message. Say, please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access. There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry. Because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago. And it was so much. You know, then... Now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> For me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, oh, stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen. If you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces. So that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough. 
to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries. They cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe. That even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue. I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment. There are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so-so-so person's tape. Throw it away and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the, dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me, if I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right, or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road. You will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you. And ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is, it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinchin or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me, is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. 
So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. That we, This memory you see, it's not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof, and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? Foner. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we're busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home. Straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this, no. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. 
I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. <laughs> Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. And the reason is that you have been a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God. Mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy. Very short guy. My goodness. Look. That guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. 
you're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu, you say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to, you see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we were ministering, I didn't know that the church hate music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent. Because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. and say, when you, are free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet David danced. Yet it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God, I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. 
You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now. And then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me, scared me in a way that I said, ah. And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything yet. You are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you. But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said, they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who are people who are so rich. But the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another. But they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart. The, it will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samade Emi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly but the power of God still moves. 
you are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you. Lay hands on this sick body. And you say no Kai. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. 
Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends? Who have said there's there's nothing praying in tongues is just jargon it's just rubbish but something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience it may not be your fault you were not taught but now that you have heard the word it puts pressure on you to make a decision whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to it's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual we love things happening normally let it be happening the way i have always known it and the moment i see another perspective then it is not of god it is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up it is not done this way it is not done this way i've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage putting a little place like this to honor the man of god and guest is carnal everybody's one before god and in those churches when the pastor comes he can sit anywhere once it's time for someone he can come out it is lack of excellence yet it may not be embraced as thus it may be termed spirituality God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. Young man, keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. This is what I believe. Because you were not taught the principles of excellence. You called it spirituality, but you've lost your job because of it. You were not taught diligence that a Christian is also an agent of national transformation. And time to walk in the office, you are fasting and praying. And you are not doing anything. You left your job undone. When it was time to promote you, you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around. You are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God. It convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that his hair had gone. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men. Oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be, that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lampstand has been taken 
let me tell you God can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your Bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person may God not take your position and give another Saul was still in the palace whereas the mantle had left him many churches have been stunted they are they are at the verge of the next season of their lives i was listening to a man of god and i had a revelation that blew my head he was on youtube i don't even know him just me just getting for the first time and this guy shared something that scattered my head and it was at a season in my life where i needed that exact kind of wisdom I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody when I started out every time people said things that were bad about me I felt so bad and I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us and then I listened to an apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. And he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry. He said, never try to do to people what only God can do to them. Deliverance. That was it. I learned how to sleep soundly. Because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once it was getting too much everybody would call at every time i became a receptionist hundreds of phone calls like every 30 minutes someone is calling and the person can cry for 50 it, i was wearing out literally and then the lord said why don't you put something like that some of you are in that thing right now you have you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person visitors came to your house you went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti you bought them books you went to Jordan bookstore bought books I want you to be spiritual now you are in trouble and the people have turned their back and they are insulting you because you want a good name is someone learning something here there are many of us you are spiritual but if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you take life easy no sharp 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 no I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth there are vessels there are dimensions in the spirit i want to be blessed and prosperous i don't want to be a struggling man of god i don't want koinonia to be a struggling ministry at the same time i don't want to be a carnal man of god i want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the god of my salvation i want to walk spiritually aligned i want to be at the cutting edge of what god is doing I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? 
because I know that someone needs this message divine direction I'll just read it like a lecture I'm sorry about it okay we'll have time to look at it again I love you too much it's pinching me I don't want us to just go like that I know that you've gotten something but I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared to fulfill your assignment in life you need divine guidance oh this is very important you need divine guidance no man outgrows the need to be guided no man no matter how spiritual you are you can never outgrow the need to be guided by god only a fool in his heart will say there is no god confusion i wrote here is part of the limitation of mankind i was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction divine direction in our lives divine direction very very important proverbs 16 verse 25 very quickly 16 verse 25 everybody say confusion look up please there are many of us right now that if a prophet a genuine prophet of god would enter here right now and have a one-on-one -on -one session with us and say by the grace of god i will talk with you one-on-one -on -one and let's hear what god has to say about your life i guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil many of us will wait because you say lord you must speak to me many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction is that true we want to be guided towards marriage you want to know what is the next thing some of us are in ministry right now you don't even know the next step some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny brothers and sisters listen to me inside and outside there are many of us right now what you need to see the next dimension of your christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction let's read it one to read the steps of a good man are what all that the steps the word good man there is the word righteous man too the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord shout order my steps say it order my steps god is speaking to us honestly i wish i had time to walk this thing because i really came that's the thing about passion you keep talking and talking and there is almost no time i really plan to teach seriously on this because many of us right now we are in a straight betwixt you are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction you are ready to get married but you need divine direction as a gentleman you want to start putting structures to your life but you need divine direction and let me tell you something it is terrible to be found in a place where god's anointing has not gone before you you will suffer you will struggle nothing will work when you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place everything is commanded to work for you there why do we need divine direction our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure this is one of the reasons why we need divine direction our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure which many times is limited I need divine direction because if God does not direct me 
I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of Koinonia. I can look out and say, wow, there's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not dark. That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know, whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich, who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light, whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that it's darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone and I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements to be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not, listen. It's not an insult. Look up please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed. When you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? 
do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are. No matter how apostolic you think you are. Many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing. But God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be all not where after a sermon a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say man of God this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet. But you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that run it. If you cannot wait for God to direct you, I'll never forget I was rejoicing. The year we we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start, I was so happy because I was saying, Lord, my, share my assignment now is over. Let me run and find something very useful and do. Let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere. Let me just enjoy my life. And then God summoned a meeting at once. And when I went, I almost fainted the day God told me. Those who were around, my reaction, it was like, how about God? How about God? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says, stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon 
that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners, so God speaks in diverse manners, but in these last days he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. He says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. He says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters, dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt they were forewarned. Genesis 41. Don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings. The Bible says God came to him in a dream. And he received an impartation. And God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10. They all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream. In a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul. He's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking. 
and I was sharing with him about something. And while I was talking to me, it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been marching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling. When I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny. Through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God. Or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. He must not be called a prophet. He could be called an apostle like, like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Or he could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15. I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so, so that our time is gone. I mean, this project, this one now, Second Kings 8, verse 7 to 15, is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and ben Hadad, the king of Syria was sick and it was told him saying the man of God is come. Hit our next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy like his servant. Take a present in thy hand. See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty handed. And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord saying, Shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse please. So Hazael went. Hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. 
Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son ben king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch this, verse 10. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto the man of God, Thou mayest certainly recover. He said, How be it? Let me tell you the truth. I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it? The Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just frowned his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says, he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou wilt dash their children, and rip up their women with child. Prophecy, revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord had shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, You are going to marry. I'm joking, no. You are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25 down to the end tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry and in 24 hours it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38 we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he is saying now? Listen, God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry. But his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out. Could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying. It proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. 
get out cut yourself away from that devilish association you started ministry with a man you were both genuine but now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things and you have already said we are both some friends and we're destiny helpers but god is speaking currently sever yourself from that relationship listen it's not enough to hear what god said yesterday the word of the lord can change to suit his purposes he is still god when he says i am the lord i change it not you better understand what he's saying my purposes remain eternal listen if god has destined that tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry god will not allow that position vacuum he will raise another person his plans changed but his purposes remain eternal are you getting what i'm saying isaiah 38 tells us that so that many of us do not die in egypt was it not listen do you know it was hunger that took men to egypt that's a message on his own joseph it was famine when famine hit the whole world hunger drove them to egypt and they went and became slaves there but now god was telling them you people will go out of egypt they had been there and they rejected the word of the lord when they came out to egypt now watch this god told them start moving you are going to a, a promised land but at a point god told them mark time is that true remain there while moses goes up the mountain for 40 days there was no advancement and they got angry they were waiting they said god gave us an instruction to move forward is it the same god now that will tell us to stay brothers and sisters god who talks to you in the mountain is still god in the valley you must learn to understand the current rema that the word of god is saying concerning your life this already is somebody's word this night and then finally prophet agabus in acts chapter 11 from verse 27 to 30 that's the first time we see that prophets came into a city so the ministry of prophets has been there long in the bible not a prophet prophets i wish we can just see that scripture acts chapter 11 from verse 27 prophets came agabus prophesied famine that was coming and the church prepared for the famine and in these days came prophets not one many prophets from jerusalem to antioch 28 and there stood one of them named agabus and he signified by the spirit that there should be great that famine throughout the world which came to pass in the days of claudius caesar 29 then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord, I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life?
or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He'd be, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated. And one time we got talking and I said, look, young man, listen. You do the job. The job he was doing, he was teaching in one school. Guess his salary, 5,000 naira per month. And if you don't come to teach the students, they will still deduct something from it. I told him, remain there. He's teaching you discipline. He's teaching you submission. God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. He said, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. He said, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And he said, God... My anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home? Where did it go? He said, it's still there, oh, but I... I found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it. I said, really? Wisdom from experience. Could it be that this is a revelation for someone? You finished school. You've done everything. For one year, you did not get a job. People think you don't have faith. God is teaching you the art of waiting. It will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly. You are virtuous. Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. 
even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria here comes the prophet he did not come to solve the problem he said ah okay I see that there is a situation everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet he said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if God will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it I believe in the power of God I've seen what the power of God can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when Noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace works let me tell you life is hard when you are working on your own in this kingdom we don't work with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for God it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and tell everybody bye-bye return back with your challenge no I want you to believe God tonight and insist Lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for God to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that God gave man is a fundamental right it's not for Christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice God will never 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 violate your right to choose I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing I can only advise you choose life I said before you prosperity and poverty I said before you success and failure I said before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it I choose speed I choose increase I choose honor I choose dignity I choose open doors I choose open heavens it's a choice and if you're a family man here as for you and your house you can't choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house that the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight and that within the next one month things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you if you do not believe these things exist you are not a Christian a Christian is not just one who is born again a Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life hallelujah I'd like you to believe God don't say I've come for miracle service before 
you see let me tell you the truth my assignment as a man of God is not to invite you my assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now I'm only maintaining my spiritual level I'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know i have let me just still five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is one thousand naira. look at this and if i give you this one thousand naira, it can buy a bottle of water is that true it can even buy you lunch or dinner depending on where you eat but this cannot buy you a car this cannot pay a child's school fees but it is still money so if you want to pay a child's school fees you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it not every grace solves every problem if every grace solves every problem then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Ghost again to what end it says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son there was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing Gehazi carried his rod the rod of Elisha and he came and laid it on the dead body the body did not rise but when the prophet came that dead body came back to life every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it I know men of God have prayed for you they are not fake just because you did not get results it is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace and God grants the privilege of grace and that's why as men of God we must continue to grow in grace so that what we could not solve yesterday we can now solve tomorrow that is the proof of growth are we together now we are going to pray tonight it's going to be a very quick walk in this place I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord that things will so change in your life it will surprise you please rise up on your feet lift your voice and begin to mention specifics unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come rise up on your feet and please pray oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah, oh yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah, I say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Turn my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Shalabarata <laughs> Katos.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then, and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke. Just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit remember the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i command every oppression of darkness i want to pray now i see fire in this place this is what i'm saying by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ, responsible for any challenge and any predicament, it must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause every power, bring them out right now, every oppression of darkness, it must go now, it must go now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm still praying the Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors over families. Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. 
I decree and declare be open be open now bring them out please be open now be open now in the name of Jesus overflow one two three across the road online be free now hallelujah I'm seeing I'm seeing like stones in a vision one two three four five and I'm seeing like a strange fire these are representations of altars listen there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances fire is about to come from heaven right now in the name of Jesus you are ready to shout now father every family here that is under any kind of ordinance I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let fire from heaven liberate that family right now one two three be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of Jesus we blot out handwritings we blot out handwritings bring them out I cause altars yokes of darkness ordinances speaking against the people of God oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Hey. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah 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 Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states the eastern states right now God is bringing deliverance the east Abia Anambra state Enugu state Epoi state I'm seeing an anointing right now rest on people within that state let there be liberty right now let there be liberty right now you belong to that state the power of God is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how God does it I'm seeing the map the east God is bringing liberty hallelujah the Lord is showing me the map again I'm seeing an arrow and I'm seeing it go to Benway Benway state right now I stretch my hands Benway Benway that anointing you are from that state any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now must let you go right now this is by the authority of the kingdom Benway state Benway state liberation right now in the name of Jesus Christ release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus the son of the living God things must change in your life my friend this young man lift your hands where you are there is oil being poured on your head right now 
right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ let him go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, can't wait. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed, and a strange spirit just comes. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree the power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command the restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows I'm seeing arrows arrows coming out of people that's what I'm seeing arrows 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 right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows are being removed out of people in the name of Jesus madam be free right now be set free now the Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this room. I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, those outside keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands, fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke right now as I'm passing, be free. Be free, help them please. Out now, release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. 
be open now in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus fire is resting on this road just right there I'm seeing someone the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now I stand by this grace please anyone here anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny right now at the count of three all of you just I'm seeing fire right now and I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here God is saying it is over right now I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you're an usher or not please if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now I'm pointing my hands to her I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of Jesus Christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now overflow three i came with an anointing at the count of three shout jesus fire is falling from the top to the bottom one two three go 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 now every yoke every altar be free now bring them out whether you are an usher or not bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit be free now be free now bring them out I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now every door that has refused to open i open that door right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are 27 people here the grace for speed is coming upon them I don't know who you are but right now the grace for speed I stand by the anointing from the front to the back right now in the name of Jesus receive that anointing right now speed I release speed over your life over your destiny receive speed in the name of Jesus speed in the name of Je hallelujah overflow three hear me there are people here the Lord is telling me no one rises in your family when they get to a level something brings them bow and the Lord is saying I should shift you by prophecy I stand right now I don't know where they are but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 17 Lord I don't know where they are here but in the name of Jesus I declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. 
apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you, O oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ. hallelujah there are 15 people here overflow three the spirit of revelation is coming on you unusual insight i don't know where they are but right now i'm seeing light not fire light light coming on people 15 people step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace right now in the name of jesus now we hallelujah praise the lord main auditorium please lift your hands main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people the grace for speed i'll pray it on everybody but the main auditorium there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people they will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three, like Elijah, may that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three, let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3, and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of god is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of god is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in jesus name be free right now in jesus name the power of god is resting on someone here right here i'm seeing an anointing right now it's a prophetic grace there's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you right now by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me, my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing what looks like smoke, just this region where I'm where you are looking at me. Right now, there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them, just this road right now. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people, and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity. Four of you, by the Spirit of grace, let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you. You will be mightily used by God. Where is that person? Spirit of the living God. The hand of God just near the gate here. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. A new dimension in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. May you step into that level in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend. Touch this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands over you. I command. I'm seeing chains all over your body. I command those chains to give way now. In the name of Jesus. Release him now. Let him go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I cut those chains. I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe. Let me pray for those here. Please, all of you are here. I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence. I'm seeing snakes. And I'm seeing five people. There is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones. Now, five of you, right now. These spirits, my God. My God, I'm seeing something living right now. Release them now. Release, no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered I declare emancipation now by the spirit of the living God oh. where are you coming from huh? you are a gala I want to pray for you are you alone if you came here alone what do you do I want to pray for you the spirit of death is upon you and the Lord is saying I should pray for you so that those dreams you used to have seeing dead people is that true you have dreams and Too much, yes. the Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of the hope in the there is there is someone here Hi. academic delay over your family is breaking right now i just please don't be carried away acting this thing i shunnedly to help people experience god i'm praying i don't know where that family is but now scattered in this congregation i stretch my hands let the anointing of the holy spirit family right now i'm seeing a family here none of you has a job none of you there are even a few graduates but nobody at all it's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up in your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work. 
effectually now step into that grace in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now listen among all of you from here to here the grace for speed is coming on two people listen those two people will start running now please hold them hold them so they don't enjoy themselves that anointing right now all across two people. you can't control yourself hold them please whether you're an usher I release that grace speed two people strange speed God is ending delay right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. What of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court court case. Who is that, please? Court case. Don't make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? Hold on, I have to... Where are you from? Where is that? I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on, let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent, eh? Listen, when I make an altar call, run and come because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, let me. When God locates us like this, is because he wants to help. There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no. Where state of origin? I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah? I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing that down in Portacot. Port, uh, yes, I Portacot. You came from Portacot. Yes. Go on. I'm going to pray. For, do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation. Please, as you're standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you.
to let you know that you must not make it inside anywhere. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church, you are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension, signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I caught spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame. And it's resting on at least five people. And the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now of darkness must let you go in Jesus name lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oppression leaves right now someone here there is a spirit that has oppressed your family it must go now I command that devil of darkness help her please that spirit must leave now in the name of Jesus please everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit God is visiting us right now one media person here there is an anointing resting on someone the lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family i'm seeing it by the spirit of god captivity coming to an end in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus let it end now by the spirit of the living god let it end now in the name of jesus my friend I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Infirmity. Let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The spirit of death. There is a family here. That spirit must go now. 
the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come Are you a man of God? Come, you too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer, is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I'm, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you does Amen. it make sense what i'm saying yes, sir. i want to pray for you well this boy has a great destiny forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened i want to pray for you the lord located you to bless you what's his name fortune fortune, fortune. Yes, i will pray for you mama where are you coming from i come from togo you came from togo yes just yesterday just yesterday yes what are you trusting god for oh my daughter in america she's one that sent me to you she has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that through me you will locate her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, that back pain. Eh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died, but they are alive talking to you. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. And in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Ah. Huh? I will pray for you, sir, because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you, and that grace is going to come, and God will shift you to a dimension Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one outside. No, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? 
I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. Yes, the, yes sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you're a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in jesus name the person look up please the person who comes to molest you when you sleep it comes to an end now in the name of jesus every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever in the name of jesus i don't know why why are they here who is sarah Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with the You father. are not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, 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 just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? Port Harcourt, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Yes, huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife, uh, I've listened to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. I she insisted that you come through the night today 
I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your hearts to love him more than money in the name of Jesus. And that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Estate. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the Son Amen. of the living God. You will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? You have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I learn salon. Huh? I'm learning salon. You are, I'm not here. I'm learning salon. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see these kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sakato I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. hallelujah praise the lord our time is gone we have to be fast now please listen very carefully god is touching everyone every single one under the sound of my voice three things will happen right now number one make sure you are here with your prayer request if you're not here with it please pen down it's an act of faith very quickly what you're trusting god for lift it up let the ushers have it number two we're going to minister to the sick right now we'll do it very very fast and then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it 2B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence, down, right down there, we'll call you overflow 2C. Please listen. Then there's overflow 3. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium. This is overflow 1. This is overflow 2. Then from this place down to second equis overflow 2B. From that same place down is overflow 2C. So that, so that you would know. If you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I will pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow 1. I mean overflow here. Please, you are trusting God for healing. Come stand here. Overflow 1, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2, 
stand in front of your projector stand overflow 2a please create a space for them there overflow 2a create a space for them there and then overflow 2c stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow 3 you can stand in um, in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh. Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do Overflow 3. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow 3. Um, Benga will do Overflow 2. Overflow 2. Pastor Alpha and Ima. You do Overflow 1. Um, overflow 1. We need a way of reaching Overflow Kenny Kenny will do overflow 2B overflow 2B will do overflow 2B and then Isaac Isaac in media he will do overflow 2C let's make it that way praise the Lord Father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand I'm seeing oil coming on your head and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what I'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of Jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of Jesus Christ amen Let's stretch your hands to the prayer request begin to pray in the spirit lord you are the god that answers prayers i decree and declare in the name of jesus pray over these requests is that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever there is a covenant of answered prayer in this place lift your voice and pray father i decree and i declare i prophesy i proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people, a representation of their hunger. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, are you praying? Decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony. Everything written here, we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh will never, never, never return as a disappointment. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those online joining us from all over the world, connect in the name of Jesus. 
from America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come in. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some, some spiritual thing just for the fun of it. There is power in what we are doing. It's guided by understanding. It's guided by an anointing. And God has a covenant. He's protected by his jealousy. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence, cancer, HIV, and any kind of incurable disease, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. Every impossible situation represented here, may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones, I declare, may the angel of God's presence, these angels that do not know time and distance, May they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we're entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the Spirit like never before. Hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before let it rest upon your life now i decree and declare an appetite for god and the things of god i declare you receive it right now i pray over your life every long standing issue you have prayed you have fasted you have sought counsel it has refused to change in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by this time next month, return with your testimony. By this time next month, return with your testimony. Please believe it. Don't just shout amen, believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things, and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead this month coming it must enter your hands I declare that it must enter your hands There are families where is the women that feed the men. 
Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now, the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. It says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man, and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships, and assemblies and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies, believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus. Every man who must arise in this season for your sake. To favor you. Wherever they are around this globe. By the spirit of grace. I call them to your life now. I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know, I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time. And one of us, God just opened a door. And a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life every area of struggle I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer the God of Jeshurun in the name of Jesus receive help from the Lord I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book. You have ideas, you have projects. It's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest. Nobody helps you on their own. They are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus. Right now, I connect your ideas to your helpers. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It will be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the God who has helped me by His grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life I pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus Any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word. The Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it'll be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two Win that war today, win that war today, win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow, one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to jesus the bible says ye must be born again hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.